Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to identify the x and the y-intercept of the reciprocal function. Now, this can be important in a couple ways. A lot of times when you're graphing, um, you know, if the transformations are not apparent or it's just a question you're being asked, then learning how to find the x and y-intercepts is very helpful. Also, the x-intercept is is often what we um, call you know, the solution you know, to the graph. We're looking for you know, values of when x is equal to 0. So a lot of times in a problem solving problem, we might want to find the x-intercept uh, based on you know, the context of the problem, or even actually in the y-intercept as well. So it's just kind of important information that can help you in graphing, but also in solving different types of problems. So the main important thing that I like to now you can see up here I have all these functions, and they're all f of x. But in reality, all these functions we could also rewrite as equations, right? Like y equals, and let me just do the first problem. We could also write this as y equals 2 raised to the x, OK? Um, so we can, it doesn't really matter if they're represented as a function or as an equation. The reason why I'm just rewriting this as an equation because the, the main thing that I like to do, or at least my notes that I kind of write down for this for my students, is using the equation format, not the function. If I want to find the, but again, just remember, if you have the x-axis, the y-axis, it's the y-axis or, if it's a function, the f of x-axis. Remember, y and f of x are interchangeable. So when looking for the y-intercept, just make x equal to 0 and then solve for y. When you're trying to find the x-intercept, just put y in for 0 and solve for x. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So again, when trying to find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. When you're trying to find the x-intercept, set y equal 0 and solve for x. And the reason why this works is, you know, here's your x-axis and here's your y-axis, right? And you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 right? And there, 0, 0 is your origin. So when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, like here's positive 1, here's negative 1. When x is equal to 0, that means you're on the y-axis, right? Whatever value of y is, when x is 0, that's the y-intercept. When y is equal to 0, you know, here's 1, here's negative 1. When y is equal to 0, that means you're on the x-axis, right? So whatever value of x is, when y is equal to 0, is going to be the x-intercept. So that's all you do graphic. That's how it looks graphically. So algebraically, we just replace the x and y's with 0. All right. So I wanted to write that down, so therefore, if you wanted to write that down while you do this work, you can, because you know, basically what I do is, well, I'll write it down for a couple, maybe for the first couple. So all I'm simply going to do, y-intercept, x equal to 0. So all I do, now again, remember, we're using uh, f of x here instead of y. Uh, that's just how these problems will work, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's really the f of x axis, or intercept. Um, so we're going to set x equal to 0. So I'll say f of x equals. 2 over 0. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot divide um, 2 by 0. So therefore, it's undefined. And when we have an intercept that's undefined, therefore, there is no y-intercept. Okay. Now let's go and do the, x, the next one. x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So I'm just going to replace f of x equal to 0. So 0 equals 2 over x. To solve for x, I'm going to multiply by an x on both sides. Actually, let's use a different color for this first one. So I'll multiply by x on both sides. And what I get is 0 is equal to 2. Well, 0 is not equal to 2. So since that is not a true statement or equation, again, you can say that's undefined and there's no x-intercept. Okay? Um, we can do the exact same thing here. I'm just going to uh, quickly write this one out because I'm um, 6 times 0, because these are exactly the same. Again, you notice f of x. It's equal to negative 1 over 0. So therefore, there's no y-intercept. And then over here, you do 0 equals negative 1 over 6x. Multiply them on both sides. And you get 0 equals negative 1, which is undefined. So there's no x-intercept. OK? So those are your kind of two basic ones. Obviously, when there's no transformations, you're not going to have any x and y-intercepts. However, for the last four problems, we are going to have some x and y intercepts. So it is important just to make sure that we test them out. So uh, let's do an x intercept. So y intercept, x equals 0, right? All right, so we have f of x equals 1 over 0 minus 2. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So therefore, 
f of x equals negative 1 half. Now again, if x equals 0 and f of x, uh, f of x equals negative 1 half, then we can write the y-intercept as 0 comma negative 1 half, right? Because remember, f of x and y are interchangeable. So that is your coordinate point of which is your y-intercept. For the x-intercept, uh, we are going to have y equals 0. So we'll do 0 equals 1 over x minus 2. When you multiply that whole expression on both sides, you're going to have 0 is equal to 1, which again is undefined. So there is no x-intercept. And that's true. We know that because there was no x-intercept to start with. And all we're doing is shifting the gra graph left or right. So that doesn't affect it. Um, all right, so let's go and look at here. Uh, so to find the y-intercept. So here, we know y-intercept, you're going to place 0 in for x. So let's just kind of see what this looks like. Instead of writing, oh, I guess I'll just write it in x equals 0. It, doesn't, it takes two seconds. 3 over 0 plus 1 minus 2. So uh, 0 plus 1 is 3. 3 over 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So therefore, my y-intercept is going to be 0 comma 1. Uh, to find my x-intercept, you're going to do y is equal to 0. Okay, So now we have 0 equals 3 over x plus 1 minus 2. Now this one, this one takes, a, takes a couple steps. First thing we want to do is add the 2 to both sides. Okay, So we're going to have 2 equals 3 over x plus 1. Now we need to get rid of the x plus 1 on, on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 1 on the top and the bottom. I'm sorry, on both sides. Okay, I apply distributive property here. So I get 2x plus 2. And that's going to equal 3, because the x plus 1's um, subtract out. Now I will subtract a 2, subtract a 2, and I get 2x is equal to 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 1 half. So now I know x equals 1 half and y equals 0. So I will just write that, write that over here, 1 half comma 0, and that is my coordinate point. Whew, a little bit of work there. All right. Uh, the next one, let's try to work this out. So y-intercept, y-intercept, x equals 0. Automatically, no, I cannot plug in a 0 in the denominator. So therefore, there's no y-intercept. For the x-intercept, um, y equals 0. So let's do 0 equals 5 over x plus 1. Okay, So I'm going to subtract a 1 on both sides. So I have negative 1 equals 5 over x multiplied by an x on both sides. Okay, So therefore, I'm now I'm going to have um, x times negative 1 is a negative x. And then those divide out is equal to 5. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, x equals negative 5. So therefore, my y-intercept is going to be negative 5, no, I'm sorry, x-intercept. My x-intercept is negative 5 comma 0. OK, last but not least, we have f of x equals negative 1 divided by x minus 4 plus 2. So again, first thing let's do is find the y-intercept. x equals 0. So I have f of x equals negative 1 over 0 minus 4 plus 2. Um, so 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Um, so therefore, I have a negative, uh, negative, neg uh, negative, negative one fourth plus two. So minus negative one fourth is going to be a positive one fourth plus two. Now again, we might want to rewrite two in terms of force. So therefore, two is going to be. Let's see, that would be uh, multiplied by four over four. That's going to be eight fourths. So it would be 1 fourth plus 8 fourths, right? 8 fourths is the same thing as 2. But now I can add them up, which is 9 fourths. So my y-intercept is going to be 0, 9 fourths. Pretty fun, right? Cool. Um, now let's find the x-intercept. And that is when y is equal to 0. So we'll have 0 equals negative 1 over x minus 4 plus 2. Okay, And again, we're just going to be using the same inverse operations here. You are going to want to uh, subtract by negative 2 on both sides. 
Okay, so you have negative 2 equals negative 1 over x minus 4. Uh, multiply by x minus 4 on both sides to get that off the denominator. Hmm. Negative 2, you apply distributive property here. Negative 2 times x is going to be negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 is a positive 8. And then that's going to equal a negative 1. Now we just have a two-step equation that we can go ahead and solve for. So I subtract an 8 on both sides. I have a negative 2x equals negative 1 minus 8 is going to be a negative 9. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. Um, x is going to equal a positive 9 halves. So therefore, my x-intercept is going to be 9 halves comma 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the x and the y-intercept of your reciprocal, fu reciprocal function. Thanks.